I'm part Indian, part Chinese. The Indian side was Tamil. My grandfather had trained as a civil engineer uh, and had come to Singapore to seek his fortune. My father's family was very anglicized. He, my aunties and so on, uh, had very powerful English, very idiomatic English. Up to the age of 15, we spent a lot of time together. And uh, he took me to Victoria Memorial Hall, where you had the portraits of previous governors and colonial secretaries. And he stopped before the portrait of Major McCallum. And he told me, Eddie, that is the codger Grandpa rowed with. Now, look at that sentence. Codger. That's a put-down word. And the word rowed. It's so just as if you are you know, dealing with somebody who's a bit lower than you and not too civilized. Rowed with. Well, completely idiomatic. Now, that meant the English we use in the house was pretty standard. Uh, the Chinese family was basically Teochew, had come from Swatow. Late 18th century or early 19th century was the first movement. And I think they went to uh, Sulawesi, etc. And later on, the second movement, they went to Th Thailand, Siamlo, and came to Singapore. And uh, part of the family from uh, the eastern part of Southeast Asia joined them. We lived in Mandai, a completely Teochew area. You had so-called squatters, vegetable farmers and so on. School was great. My father was sports master. In those days, the teaching fraternity knew each other well. They consisted basically of normal trained teachers and they were the backbone. And then after 1927, you started having graduates coming to teach in schools. And some of the graduates taught in primary schools. So can you imagine the quality of education we got? Limited British colonial, but it was fantastic. And you know, education doesn't develop you merely in terms of content. Education really is the development of mental instruments because the instruments never get out of date. The substance does. I, I have a little tale here when my, when my teacher uh, got pregnant and my father took over the class. That was about the most miserable time of my life. Your father is a teacher, it's terrible. And you see, I could make the distinction at that age, you're too young, between what is duty official and what is domestic home. You couldn't draw the line, and he maintained the line. Now, Japanese occupation, interesting. You grew up faster. I, I learned team games, which I wouldn't have learned in Mandai. And what I found in Japanese school is this. They treated you like young adults, not as children. And that is the secret of the Japanese occupation. They always treated you slightly older than you were. They always pushed you. And the games we played always had the sense of war, of competition. I learned discipline. I learned how to bear hunger. I learned to do things I didn't like doing. I went to Victoria in 1948. School was not very demanding, you know, in those days. Standard 8, he started reading poems. And that was, for me, probably about 1950. And when I went to university, we did literature. See, the degree structure re required you for the BA to do two majors and uh, 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 a minor, or two minors. So my minor was philosophy. My other subject, uh, my other major was history. And I wanted this particular combination because I thought philosophy would help me uh, study the preciseness of language and so on. After all, almost the whole of philosophy is based on language. So at university, history intrigued me, but literature was the one that was most revealing. We did a potted version of uh, history of English, English literature from uh, Chaucer to whatever. But what was interesting is that we could read and do what we wanted. One essay a week, huh? and that was good because it forced you to write. We read outside the syllabus, you know, outside the text. And the whole library was there, it was fantastic. I, 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 I used to read all the poets. I, eat, I, I read uh, uh, John Wilmot Earl of Rochester. He wasn't on the syllabus, but because of the sexiness of his poems and, and, and the, the pornography almost, I, I found him quite by chance, you know. Pinto's edition, you know. And of course, my roommate, saw me, he discovered the bloody 
and then uh, Rochester became favorite reading for the wrong reasons. I couldn't have had a richer, maturing period during adolescence than what I had there because the university brought together some of the most interesting people of my, my age in one place. I reported for duty on the 4th of November, 57. Uh, uh, but before that, I went to the office, Japanese slippers, unshaven, short pants. So when I walked there to, uh, to ask, to find out a little bit about the place, they thought I was a bloody office boy from somewhere. A lot of questioning before they let me in. Now, income tax taught me two things. Discipline. You met a lot of people. It taught you about human nature. I resigned because of James Puducherry. He was in Central Problem Fund. He says, Edwin, what the hell are you doing there? Come and work with me. I said, OK. Now, he was chairman. He was an economics graduate and, you know, part of PAP. I joined CPF 61 May. So, uh, I, I was there. I worked hard. I, I, I didn't like the work. I was hard. And they, when they found I had income tax background, they made me the accountant of CPF. And I was accountant for 40 months. As accountant, I had 63 hours to exercise. I gave away 60 and I kept three. One, the power to take back what I've given others. And the other, to sign checks above a certain amount. So my work, my predecessor used to stay there up till six, seven o'clock every day, you know. But I discovered I could finish my work in three hours. So we were a, a kind of gang, you know. We, we were very happy, a kind of family. You see, I come from a family of teachers. Huh? My father, teacher, my five sisters, all teachers. <laughs> all right, one, one brother was a teacher. And, 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 and I, I, I like teaching because, you see, teaching is the best way to learn. Knowledge is so vast, you feel humble before it. You know you can never master, so there's always things you don't know. I joined on the 16th of June. And I started teaching almost immediately. It was tough. You had a tutor every year from year one to year three. And I was asked to teach Jacobian drama and romantic poetry. Later on, I, I taught modern poetry. I used to get up at 6.30, sleep at 12. Hardly any family life. Because they, they, they loaded me uh, with a fair amount of work. But I told myself, I shall not buckle under. And this is where my discipline learned in. Income tax, ooh, tremendous. The most challenging point in my, during my deanship was the fact that we tripled our arts intake from 500 to 1,005. Now, on paper, it can be done easily. My, I had the following concerns. Standards, continuity. Staff would have to work much harder and therefore their publications would go down. So I wrote a memo. I had to protect staff. One, one paragraph I had, do not expect the same quantity or level of research publications. And I said, we've got to also owe them sabbatical leave. And also the other, the other great challenge was merger. The first thing I had to do was to merge NTU and SU. And ironically, almost all the heads of departments in, in NUS came from SU, except for Chinese studies. I introduced English language as a principal subject. You know, because I, I thought it was very odd to have English as the major functional language in Singapore and yet not have a Department of English Language and Literature. I remember one year there was a bonanza somewhere, $114,000 was given to our faculty. The dean was supposed to distribute it. I distributed it on the basis of uh, 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 number of staff. But I kept about 40000 for me to handle and the, the, the heads asked why. I said, don't ask me why, you will see why. Now, we used to have rules in the admin. You can go to a conference only once a year, one conference a year, not more. There are scholars like that. They work on their research. When the research is ripe and ready for presentation, they want to go to three conferences in the same year. They've never been to any conferences in the meantime. That doesn't count. So I used to use this money, this 40,000 to give them to go to three conferences. The admin will give them one. And the admin will be very upset with us. They said, you're breaking our rules. I said, yes. When rules are stupid, what do you do? So the period was, was interesting. It taught me even more about human nature. But more important, it taught me more about myself. And uh, not all I saw was pleasant. And therefore, you try to change. The most difficult thing is to prevent authority becoming power. You exercise authority as part of your job. 
and you must never exercise power. I was fortunate in having very good vice deeds and sub deeds. And my working style is pretty unorthodox. And I never discourage a good idea. In fact, I encourage it. I don't care where it comes from. I've always had an, uh, a fascination, you know, with words and so on, and they've always interested me. Especially, what happens if you were to shift their position? Huh? What happens if you were to substitute? Uh, and I had classmates who were from Chinese schools, very strong background. We started translating, playing with poems. They will tell me what the meaning is, and I try to put it in words. And then I said, look, you know, I might as well have a go, write, write some of my own stuff. So I started writing in Standard 8, and my class teacher showed them to uh, Seamus Fraser, who was the senior English teacher uh, in the school. He uh, looked at my poems and, you know, he encouraged me to write. Very much a mentor, and he was a very unorthodox teacher. He never taught you the syllabus. Even before I went to university, while I was at school, I went up to meet the university poets. I met Gang Wu, uh, I met uh, Sintap, but I met Bida Lim, who was a very important influence in the growth of our literature. Uh, Bida edited this huge uh, collection of poems in uh, New Cauldron. So I, I had met these people and then I had listened to what they were doing. And, and I, 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 I saw the obvious connection between poetry and nation poetry and what we are going to become. But, but you see, the other thing that, that, that moved me were some of the really fundamental questions about identity. It's usually when you have a funeral or when you have a special occasion like New Year that everything comes out. But if you look back, the funerals are the one that brings everything out. The other thing that brings everything out are weddings. Birth and death. Procreation and death. And that is one of the themes I take up incess incessantly in the Koffer Elbaker. Elbaker has got a lot of thought behind it. You see, in, in Elbaker, what I wanted to do was to try to write a long poem that will take various facets, bring them in, hmm? and to talk about uh, where we are now, to talk about the land, to talk about Singapore, Malaya. Hmm? Now, the influences there, the major one is Yeats. Remember, I mocked Plotinus' thought. I, I quote that one. And of course, the other one uh, was Eliot. That's why the word cough, the, the goat cough in the attic. I learned not only uh, about how to write, about words from Yeats, I also learned attitudes to ask fundamental questions. Change, permanence, identity, national identity. I learned that from him. Firstly, as you pointed out earlier, there are less, uh, less personal poems in them, in the sense that uh, Rib of Earth was uh, personal, okay. Uh, and uh, I already had been, you know, giving a lot of thought to the, the major issues about nationhood. So that started creeping. God Can Die is about a, a dear friend, the poem. Uh, he had got into politics and become powerful, you know. And he started changing a bit. Huh? What is friendship? Friendship is openness. If not for friends, who are we? How do we extend ourselves through our friends? And we extend them through us. The themes there, you know, you know in, in a way, you, you just write poems. And uh, themes emerge because you write more poems on a particular theme. I didn't set out to write anything, I just wrote poems. The flowering tree was put together in less than three weeks. And remember, these were the days without the computer typing. Every poem had, been to, had to be typed. What happened was this, I was asked, to start the first, first Priyu seminar. It suddenly struck me that it'll be good to have an anthology about our poems, our poems. There was hardly any selection as such. You wanted to put as much as you, 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 you could. Let the standard look after itself in due course, you know, but get them interested first. So I, I put the thing together very quickly and I had to write a, a very rough introduction, first draft, put it in, just to get it in time to distribute to the kids. Now, when you get awards, uh, first, first time, quite exciting, you know. You're a human being. Eh? Uh, and after that, you think about it and says, look, you know, uh, uh, others are equally deserving. Because, you see, 
while we need an ego, we also need humility. And writers have an e writers' egos are so big you can't see them. But you must mustn't allow it to be visible. You've got to tap your ego. You, you you've got to harness it. And then you think of what you're doing, and you get rewarded for that. That's that's important. It gets younger people wanting to do the same thing, wanting to generate their own ambition. And if it's a regional one, it's good for your country. And I always tell people, I said, look, I happen to be the old bloke, you know. I've done it earlier than you, that's all. The poem I like has yet to be written. You've got to have that feeling. You mustn't feel I've achieved. You can feel I have achieved, but it is not enough. The poem that I'm going to write is what matters. The next one, the next one, the next one. You've always got to think in those terms. That and, and also you've got to think, uh, you don't, your poems don't get better, they get different.